one over. Hello snowboarders of the internet, I'm your host Averin Lefebvre and in this video we're going to be reviewing the Clue Freedom 1.0. That's right, the strap-in step-out binding that puts a stirrup on your foot and every influencer that you follow in snowboarding is pushing at you. Because clearly you people do not understand what this binding actually is. So let's dive into this review. I rode these bindings at Copper Mountain on a day that was slightly overcast in the morning, more bluebird in the afternoon. You had a mix of low temps to high temps. You had hot pow, choppy pow, leftover pow, sugar snow, firm fast groomers, soft chunky groomers, lumpy snow, chop and chunder. And I rode it with my Ride Shadow Band snowboard and my K2 Thraxxus boots. All right, let's talk about the adjustability of this binding or the lack thereof. If you want to adjust anything on the fly, you're pretty much screwed. The only thing that you can adjust on the fly, and that's still going to take a lot of work, is the toe ramp. And the toe ramp is literally designed as if it was from a rental binding. It's got these three tabs that you have to make sure that you can get down to slide it forward or backwards. And even when you do get that down, it's still a bitch to move. It's the exact same thing that Rosinal and Solomon and others use on their rental binding. This is just more plastic with a little bit of foam over it. It isn't what you want in there. It's crap. It's cheap. Let's talk about the rest of the adjustability on this. You have a push pin system for the toe strap. So you have to push it down, pull it forward or pull it back and then it locks in. There is also a proprietary piece on these that is a little cog with a gear on it. And this will allow you to bend it forward or backwards to set it. If you lose this piece, you are completely screwed. This piece constantly pops out when I'm adjusting them. You lose this piece, you are completely screwed. Now they do sell aftermarket parts on their website, finally. You might wanna load up on those because this piece will literally ruin your day if it pops out and you lose it, if you're adjusting them or anything. With the actual straps themselves, you have two set screws, one on the toe, one on the heel. You need a number three screwdriver to adjust these. On the fly adjustment, that's gone. Same thing with your forward lean. It is the exact same screw that is in there. Once again, you are not adjusting these on the fly. So if you were hoping to get any adjustment on the fly to dial this in, good luck. You're gonna have to go find a number three screwdriver to work with it. And these adjustments are so minuscule with what you actually have, it's horrible. For something that is claiming to be clever and new, it's using antiquated technology to get it done. If I were you, I would take these set screws out and replace them with something better. I do not trust these at all. So let's talk about the straps. Have you ever ridden a rental binding and said, I love these straps and I want them on my personal setup? You haven't? Good, you're a normal human because if you had, that's what you're getting with this. And pay attention to the term rental binding or rental strap or anything with that verbiage because there is a lot of trickle down rental technology in these bindings. So with the heel strap, it's a molded strap that has next to no rigidity. All the padding is gonna come from your boot. Nothing wrong with that. What's wrong with it is this is a very soft flexing strap that you can push through. Now the problem is it's constrictive and restricts you due to the stirrup on the side of this. So you basically have to push into this, then push over to get any lateral flex. And what lateral flex you get from the strap is very minuscule. It is non-existent. With the toe strap, it's not asymmetrical. That means the one on your right can be flipped over and put on the one on your left and it's not gonna matter. It's just very, very generic. This will fit more of a pointy toed boot. I noticed that, but it still slips. I constantly had issues with this throughout the day. I kept readjusting it and it would keep sliding down. Then you'd have to click it back up or you'd have to go back to the car, get the screwdriver, unscrew it, reset it on the boot. It was just an issue. These things are not something that you can just set up and forget. You have to constantly be aware that when you're going in and out of it, at least on the back foot, you might have it move on you. And that can be a problem. So let's talk about the ratchets. I'd say they worked, but let's be real. I clicked into them once and wore the stirrup around, walking around like I see every idiot that's ever bought these. So I think I only clicked into them twice. Yeah, okay, you got your one finger quick release. It's smooth, but then, you know, it also climbs well enough. The one thing to note is that it is attached with a torque screw 
which means you need a separate tool to adjust it if anything happens. Now, with the tow ratchet, it is a locking ratchet. So you have to make sure that you actually pull it up to get it to release on you. Then you can push it back down and lock it in. One thing that you should know about this, that is a plastic release tab on there. The heel is actually metal. It is more burly. This is plastic. This will crack if a skier steps on it in the lift line. It gets too cold. It is cheap. It is very, very cheap. And I'm honestly surprised I haven't heard more people breaking these from people clanging into them and whatnot. So let's talk about the high back and the step in mechanism. So the high back, as you can see here, is actually shorter than other high backs and it is very wide. One thing to note is with the way this mechanism is, even when you're pushed back in the high back, you have this restrictive flex point on the side. So if you're trying to get lateral flex, you actually have to push through the strap and then push over. This creates more leg fatigue than anything. Overall, it's a very weird system to use. Now, everyone's gonna be like, oh, it's so easy. You know, you just step in, step down and it locks in. Okay, yeah, it does but let's talk about it when it's locked in. So when I had this locked in, I actually buttered so hard that I got one clip to disengage on one side more than once. It actually happened to me three times. Now, does that happen with everyone else out there? No, but reading comments online from people that actually bought these at $500 a pop, it seems to be consistent. You also have on the high back, this release lever. So this has two springs, one in each side. If you do not keep even tension on this, it will not release. Also, the springs seem kind of cheap and they feel like they stretch out as you use them more and more, which is to be expected. So when you have a cheap spring in there and you're using it more and more, are you really gonna trust that? Now, on the actual stirrup on these things, you have two little cleat hooks. There's no double hook on this. It's a single one on each side. If this fails, you're going to eject. There is no extra catch for this. For a $500 binding, you'd think you'd get more out of it, but you don't. You have this little traction pad right here that goes underneath, and you're supposed to be able to, you know, get some grip with this. Now they say you're not supposed to wear these in the lodge. I see everyone that has these doing it. These things are slick. I slid on the tiles because I took these things everywhere. I walked through the central courtyard at Copper Mountain, took them to the bathroom, went everywhere with them just to see what they would do. Slick. And these only have one day of use and they are noticeably worn down. So the other thing is that it actually makes a rigid point up the back of the calf. And that is a whole thing in itself too. But we'll talk about that later in this review. So let's talk about the binding flex. Look at how big this dead spot is. That is absolutely huge. You are giving up any lateral or toe to heel flex underfoot because this has a very big disc and a huge dead spot. This disc is not level. It's bent. Why is that bent? That shouldn't be bent. It's not an aluminum disc, but this is the quality you get. That was bent coming out of the injection mold. Now, the other thing to note about it is with the stirrup. As I said, you have to basically push through the heel strap and then push over to get it to properly engage. When you do, it's aggressive. It, it takes more effort. It's constricting and not responsive and not flexible where you need it to be, but where you don't want it to be it is flexible and unrestrictive. It's so counterintuitive to regular bindings or anything else on the market that I've ridden. This binding just does not flex and just creates an immense dead spot. If you hate your lower back, then this is the binding for you because the ride on this binding is atrocious. There is nothing to dampen any vibrations. It just sends everything right up into your foot ankle, knees, hips, and then finally your lower back. Yeah, some people will be like, oh, there's this cover pad on the binding. It's like a wet paper towel. It doesn't do anything. Sure, the toe section is a little thicker and has more padding to it, 
but then you look at the fact that it's got a tri post in there and that is just sitting right flush on the board with hard plastic that's pushing right up into your toes under the heel you actually have a giant gap under the stirrup. I can fit my pinky finger underneath there. So what that's actually doing is it's hitting it, sending it out to the sides, and then going right up into your ankles. It's bypassing the foot and just sending it right to the ankle. It does not dampen at all. You feel everything with this. I got a full body workout with this binding. I don't know how anyone rides these every day and makes vlogs about it and tells people that this is great because this binding is so over-engineered and underutilizing better technology that's out there, it's atrocious. For a binding that's trying to tout being clever and new and that you don't have to bend over and it's gonna prevent you from having problems, it's putting stressors on your body in the hip flexors in your lower back that shouldn't be there. A better binding will dampen that kinetic energy and those vibrations and make for a smoother ride. This. I don't even want to say it's a lively ride. It just feels like being in a rental binding from 2003. So who is this binding for? Someone that's gullible. Someone that believes in influencer marketing. Someone that gets suckered in by targeted ads. You're a mark and you got taken. All right, so this is what everyone's really tuning in for and that's my personal thoughts. These are cheap pieces of shit. The material is cheap, the straps are cheap. Everything is cheap. One thing that I want everyone to know, and I had multiple people tell me about this is, the mounting screws will shear off in your inserts because these are cheap. Looking at them, I can't quite tell by the eye, but they look a little thinner than a normal screw. And when you look at a normal screw and you compare it to this, you can kind of see that the thread width is a little wider, which means that these are sitting in your inserts moving around. So when they shear off, they shear off in your inserts. I actually had one of the guys from Dark Side Vermont hit me up on Instagram and tell me when I had posted that I was riding these to change out the hardware because they'd had them shear off in people's and they didn't want me to get hurt. You need to be very careful with these screws. I would replace them right off the bat. The whole thing is a bad design. I said it when it was a 3D, video rendering and there were just a bunch of design engineering students who had gone snowboarding and thought they could revolutionize the snowboard binding. This was not built by snowboarders or even people that snowboard. It was built by people that went snowboarding and decided to go back to college to their professor at their design institute and be like, we wanna make a new snowboard binding as our final project. And then after that, they decided to go on the German version of Shark Tank or Dragon's Den or whatever the hell they call it over there, and they got funding for it. You had, from the time you made that 3D rendering to getting this built, no prototyping, no alpha testing, no beta testing, anything. You just released it to the public, and it shows. This is cheap. The plastics in this literally look like regrind. And for those of you that don't know what regrind is, it's the excess material when you make a 3D molded or an injection molded binding and they shave it off, they put it back through and extrude it back into the mold to make it again. That's what this looks like. $500 for minimal adjustability, rental straps. I mean, these literally look like they fell off of a Rosinal rental binding. The whole marketing push behind this, why is it that it's people like Snowboard Jesus, Board Bikes and Hikes, Jonathan Buckhouse, Snowboard Pro Camp pushing this? Because they got paid to. They got paid to. When I went looking for real reviews of this, there was one guy that was questionable enough that I was like, he has no other content except reviews of this and Burton Step-Ons. And I'm just like, that's friggin' weird. There's one guy that looked like a mom's basement or German sex dungeon podcast booth, and he talked about it. And then there's James Beastie from The Good Ride, who I'd never trust to begin with. It's not even a good concept. And it's like, they're like, we're clever, we're new, we started this. Bonhiever Freebase. They used magnets and a cam system to do a strap in, step out binding. Burton did it with the Fusion back in like 05, I think, 04. I don't know, I was in New York, so that was like 18, 19 years ago when I rode them. I actually rode those bindings. They rode well, but they had design flaws and Burton scrapped that, and that was a better binding. That should tell you right there what you need to know. When you look at a binding, if the screws look cheap, it's cheap, and that's what this is. Everyone that bought this, I feel bad for you, but the best thing I can tell you is swap out all the screws. Swap them out. 
for more than half my life. I have worked in the snowboard industry. I have written and done snowboard reviews for 20 years. I have no reason to lie to you guys about this. I'm not making any endorsement by any of these other ones. Those are all better systems that actually have real R&D budgets, and this doesn't. It just screams fly by night. And I watched a video from Kevin from Snowboard Pro Camp on them assembling these, and the parts just look like shit. The whole thing. There's just an inconsistency when you look at bindings. Like if you look at the right to the left, the quality control is not there. Some of the screws that are like the torque head ones that they have to really torque on are stripped out on one side, but not on the other. That means someone was holding that power tool that put it in wrong. And I see other people's comments online where they're like, didn't engage properly, didn't click in, disengaged, had problems, returned it. They don't wanna talk about it. And this should be another telling thing. Notice there's really only positive reviews and those people are pushing their promo code for 10% off. They're paid to endorse it. It's a bought review. There's 560 something, I think it's 568 reviews on Google for this product that are all five star rated. No other snowboard company has it. This company's been around for two years. What does that tell you? All of you guys that are pushing this, you took a fucking paycheck and it's sad and depressing because you have no integrity and you do not want to help snowboarding. So one thing that a lot of you guys don't know is I sit in on design meetings and I talk to a lot of designers and I've worked with a lot of brands on boots, boards, bindings, and I've given feedback and I've sent feedback on it to make better products for you guys. I do that because if we all have better products, we're all gonna ride better, we're gonna enjoy it more and snowboarding is better. This is not a good product at all. I rode something like 30, 35 pairs of bindings for 2023, 2024. I've ridden hundreds of bindings in my lifetime. I know how a binding is supposed to work. This isn't it. Comparable bindings. Buy a Supermatic, buy a Step-On. That's the route we're going with this. You don't need this. All right, well, if I didn't piss you off, why don't you subscribe, click the bell, get those notifications. You know, that way you're not missing any of these videos when they come out. And if you are pissed off, I'm sure you're gonna leave a comment down below and tell me I don't know what I'm talking about, even though I've probably gotten more days this season than you've gotten in the last five. Either way, if you really wanna support us and help us recoup some of the financial loss of this, swing on over to Angry Snowboarder VIP and become a member. I could tell you more here. I got a video over there that explains it. As always, guys, I've been your host, Avery Lefebvre, and my body's still recovering from using this a month later, and I'll see you in another video. Mm -hmm.